Abreu hits one high in the air, deep to left field, all the way back. Brown, he's near the wall. He jumps, it's gone! There you go! Jose Abreu's first home run is an Astro, and he's sprinting around the bases like he has never hit one before. He is going to fly into home plate, and the Astros lead 7-1. to one. He can't wait to celebrate. Look at this crew. They love this guy. This is awesome. That was a fun game Sunday, and I'm happy for Jose Abreu that he got that moment because we did say going into the weekend, if it doesn't happen against the A's, when is it going to happen? When? But I'm happy for him. I'm sure that's got to happen, feeling a lot better about himself, and hopefully he can turn that into more. I know he had a hit yesterday as well. Astros absolutely destroyed the A's in that game on Sunday. I remember watching it at Sporting Club for a friend's birthday party, which is a bar on Washington. Did not think I would be going out on Sunday. I told myself, I'm going to take it easy today. Nope. No. Still, still feeling the effects of uh, that Sunday, but it was fun while the Astros were winning at sporting club, hitting home run after home run after home run. And if you heard on the call right there, Jose Abreu was literally sprinting around the bases for that home run. And you know what? I kind of like it. I kind of like the complete change of pace, right? You know, me baseball takes too long. So to see somebody sprinting around the bases after hitting a home run and then sliding towards the dugout, I liked it. I don't know if it broke any unwritten rules, Sean. What did you think about it? I, I was just shocked by how fast he was. <laughs> I was like, he was really fast. I was like, whoa, slow down a little bit. <laughs> like, I, I don't know how many dead sprints he has left in those in those legs. Like, I <laughs> He might have looked faster because we're all shocked that anyone is sprinting around the bases after a home there's run some, and there's some like camera work to just like make them like like they do tom cruise and yeah. mission impossible where it's like is he the fastest man alive <laughs> it felt like that i gotta say astros clubhouse is still fantastic vibes immaculate the, these are these are guys who clearly like each other and not every baseball team can say the same thing about itself winning obviously helps anyway that moment might have led to some retribution from the Oakland A's down 10-1 in the ninth inning. Jose Abreu at the plate. This guy decided, you know what? Game's not over till it's over. I'm going to start some beef before this series ends. And he gets oh, hit man. by that pitch. Oh, Abreu. Gets hit by that pitch, and we're going to get warnings issued by Tony Randazzo. It's kind of interesting. Abreu had a little bit of fun sprinting around the bases on that home run. You know, nothing against Jeff Blum, who I like. But after what we got from Jeff Bagwell last week, that is a moment where I want the unpolished... La, uh, non-giver of bleeps Hall of Famer on the call because I want to hear what he would have said right away. It's like, kind of interesting. Could have done better than that. However, Jeff did appropriately set the scene and say, yeah, this was probably some sort of retribution. It was clear retribution. What the hell are you doing? What are you doing, Oakland? My God. The, the game's almost over. Did you see Jordan Alvarez standing at the top of the dugout too? Like Jordan looked like he was about to go back downstairs and maybe not go John Morant and pull out the old, the old, what is it, blippy? He wasn't going to take his blip. That iron. That iron. But what was the other term that that, that I liked? That Glicky? I for- Glicky, that's it. Wait, was it that? I, I said Blicky. 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 Yeah, Blippy's, uh, Blippy's like a one of those child television shows where you're like, what's, what's this guy's deal? Okay. Hey, there's a mon- there's a there's a there's a there's a market for everybody. Anyway, to to bring it back, Jordan looked like he was gonna kill them. Like Jordan looked like he was going to bring out two bats and and go Negan on these guys. I wish that it had escalated further. I'm not gonna lie. I I was already vibing hard on that Sunday at Sporting Club. You know, we're we're a couple of Palomas in. Yeah, I'm gonna take a shot every time the Astros score a run. Oh, <laughs> I took a I I took far too many shots there. 
My my friend had a birthday party and she has some friends who were very aggressive. They just kept passing me shots. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't really want to. And then there'd be like a cute bartender that would come by and I'd be like, and then she'd be like, oh, you're not even going to do one. And then like was ripping shots over and over. And I'm like, oh, damn. No, I mean, I'm going to look like a, I'm going to look like a little bitch if I don't do it. So I did it. Hey, if you ever want to peer pressure me into drinking, it's not that hard. Not that hard. But anyway, so that's one moment that people were very mad about. Oh, how dare you bully the A's by running around after a home run too fast. So strange. It was his first one in like almost a, like a year. Literally <laughs> seven months, eight months, maybe more. Since September, Jeez. right? Jeez, yeah, yeah. So we're like nine, eight to nine months. Wasn't it like week two of the it, like Houston Texans? It was week one. Season? Week one. It was the same day that the Texans tied the Colts. The same day. Oh, what a terrible day in sports history. Um, This is one of those things where you're like, why? Just, just why? Is it really because of the slide going into first or going into the dugout? Maybe. Okay. I don't know if that's calling attention to yourself as much as it's like spur of the moment. Everyone was at the foot at, at the uh, top of the dugout waiting to welcome you. But that moment did not get the kind of reaction that another moment did. The Astros Twitter account, we have brought this up. They have really leaned in to being a-holes. But they're funny. Because it's humor that's funny for us. It's not funny for everybody. It is humor entirely for people who are Astros fans who follow the Astros on Twitter. So after the Astros had another home run, I think it was Jordan Alvarez's home run, to take a 10-1 to lead in the ninth, the Astros tweeted, 10 runs in front of tens of fans. Here's what CBS Sports wrote about it. The tweet has since been removed from the Astros account. That's an interesting way to put it. Sports Illustrated headline, Astros take cruel dig at A's. My Seattle side of my timeline starts blowing up. People are getting pissed off about the Astros again. Remember, they got very mad about the Astros saying, see us in the next round of the playoffs or whatever the hell it was. In the sweep thing. They got really mad about that. The sweep. They talked trash to an AL West rival. Fans loved it. It created engagement. They did their job on social media. Whatever the case, some people thought that this was a, a bridge too far. And here's what I have found interesting as I have returned to Houston after spending a couple of years in Seattle. Seattle people get so pissy about this. I feel like Mariners fans might hate the Astros more than anybody. And maybe it's because in the AL West, there really aren't that many passionate fan bases after the Astros, right? Like, does anyone in the in LA claim the Angels? No, that's a Dodger town. Does anyone in Oakland still claim the A's? Not really. And Texas, I mean, they've been bad for like a decade. So I, I don't think that there's the same level of passion. Seattle has weirdly had a passionate fan base to start sucking for a really long time. But there were some Twitter accounts, I guess, that were digging into Astros LinkedIn accounts and like posting profile pictures of random guys from the organization. Maybe they were suggesting that this was the person who sent out the tweet. This became a big scandal over the weekend. I love that Astros Twitter account. I hate that somebody told them to stop. And I'm sure that that came from suits or or actual at MLB, but nothing should be out of bounds. Anything Humor is something that you can't create rules for. You can't. And I understand that some people take things too far. Was this taking it too far? There were literally tens of fans. He said 10 runs in front of tens of fans. It's pretty funny. What? We want some of this, like, bubblegum BS with sunshine and sprinkles. Oh, yeah, we're just in it to play baseball and have a good game and eat orange slices afterwards. No. If you're running one of these accounts and you want to make waves or if you just want to be entertaining, do this. This is good. Trash talk is good for baseball. There is no heat between any team in baseball because this stuff doesn't happen. And, and now you're trying to stifle something. This is good. The reason that the NBA is crazy, I don't know if the team accounts do this, except for the Rockets, RIP to the social media guy who killed the horse with the gun. RIP to the horse, too. Nah, the horse, the horse, yeah, whatever. 
It's a horse. It, it made some nice glue. <laughs> Good. Yeah, it's a horse. Like, who cares? No offense to the horse people out there. It was a there. horse emoji. It's a horse. <laughs> it's it's a horse emoji, too. You're right, Sean. <laughs> uh, that stuff's funny. And and this back and forth beef is good. Like you want hatred. Hatred is a great reason to watch sports. I had a person talking trash to me at the bar that I watched the Celtics and Heat game six at, entirely because I was wearing a Celtics jersey. He was just talking trash the entire time. And then when the Celtics won, I got in front of him and his family and his mother and his father, and I absolutely destroyed him. And it was great. Because everyone was on my side for that retribution. It was justice telling him that he had man boobs. It was absolute justice. Because he was going after me for no reason. But that's what makes sports fun. Yes, teamwork, sportsmanship, etc. Hate. Hate drives us all. So let's bring a little hate back into the game. I can't believe people were upset with this. That was hilarious. The A's, it's their own fault. They've played in this dump of a stadium for like three decades. And they've never tried to leave it. That stadium was expired when I was born. It was 34 effing years ago. It was a dump then. It's even more of one now. There's a bleeping possum that overtook the play-by-play broadcasting booth. And on top of that, none of their fans show up. It is it is essentially a nothing franchise at this point in time. You can't make jokes about it. It's cruel. No, it's not. It's the way of the world. Get with it. Oh my God. It's like the line of thinking that comes from someone like Kendall Roy. Paul Galan Show, ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Oh, I'm the oldest boy. I'm the oldest boy. What an absolute meltdown by him, by the way. Like the Heat blew that lead. No, not, if the Heat blew that lead, it still would not have been ba- as bad as Kendall Roy blowing it in the finale of Succession.